Okay, so this is a hack that was uh, introduced by this guy, Ray Flores, uh, on the uh, the Moverio group, and um, it was to connect a uh, Apple TV Gen 3 uh, over an ad hoc connection using AirPlay to an iPhone connected to a the Mavic controller, uh, and using this as a mechanism to get uh, the video feed through HDMI to your Moverios, the BT35e. And I had actually, so the, the, this, the process was to, to modify it. So it's um, modify the Apple TV to take in USB five volt input, which is something that I had actually already done years ago for a completely different like augmented reality project that I was working on. Um, but at the time I experienced a huge amount of latency in, um, pretty much scrapped that as a possibility um, almost right off the bat. Um, but what he suggested was uh, using it in ad hoc mode uh, because the latency is actually significantly lower in ad hoc mode. And so this video kind of goes into me testing that out with the Movirios and actually having really quite positive results. Um, so. Here you go. This is my Apple TV Gen 3 mod. It is not attractive at all. <laughs> it's got uh, USB 5 volt power in. Uh, it's just got a DC to DC, DC converter inside of it that um, goes from 5 volts to, I don't remember what the, the internal uh, voltage it uses are or is, but this is um, just an eighth inch uh, audio jack because by default the uh, uh, Apple TV only has optical, so I've got a little spit if uh, to um, analog converter, which has nothing to do with this project. It just happens to be something that I've done in the past. Okay, right, so this is the setup. We've got our BT35E right here. It's connected to a battery bank with the USB-C cable, same cable that I used to connect it to my smart controller that can also do video. Um, obviously, the uh, connected to the glasses and then HDMI over to the Apple TV, um, which is also being powered by the battery bank through the USB mod. So here we are doing a latency test. In the upper left hand corner is the base time. Uh, in the bottom left is the iPhone that's connected directly to the remote. And in the top right, you can see through the Moverios. Okay, so you can see that when the base time is at 1.23 seconds, the iPhone Mavic controller is at 1.06 seconds, and the Moverio see that it is 0.95 seconds. So this gives the latency of the whole system 0.28 seconds, the latency from the, the drone to the phone of 0.18 seconds, and the latency from the iPhone through the Apple TV to the Moveria of 0.1 seconds, which is not bad at all. Okay, so this is the setup for that last shot. Um, it begins with uh, an Osmo action, uh, which is looking through the lens of the Moverio, which is ultimately looking at an iPad holding base time with an iPhone just below it, which is what's connected directly to the Mavic controller, uh, which is then talking to the Mavic Air behind it, looking at the, the time uh, projecting into the Moverios and then having the uh, the Osmo action looking through the thing, looking at the things, watching the things. So it's sort of like a very recursive, the observer watching the observers and it was a fun and delicately balanced setup. Okay, so uh, just a heads up. In this next video, uh, I connect the Apple TV to my 4K television and to an iPad to make it have a bigger screen. The idea was that it would be kind of like a picture in picture thing so you could see what the Moverios see versus what the Mavic sees. Uh, but it was a total flop. Um, I think having to do with it being a 4K system and maybe being an older iPad. Um, but I don't yet know that in the video um, as I'm trying it out for the first time. So just a heads up, it's crap, but uh, when used with an iPhone and with the Moverios directly, it actually works great. Okay, so for this setup, um, I just got the Apple TV connected to my TV um, and I've got my iPad connected to my remote and so I, it's on the iPad just because I wanted the biggest possible screen uh, to compare 
sort of video quality with um, uh, on the Apple TV versus the iPad. So we just go to screen mirroring. Uh, I'm not connected to Wi-Fi, and so it just detects the Apple TV over the ad hoc. We connect it. Boom. Go back. And then I'm going to stand behind the camera and see if I can pilot this through the, uh, the TV. All right, this is a voiceover from the future. Uh, I was having a terrible time, uh, both trying to fly with the latency of this specific system connected to the TV and the iPad, uh, and narrating at the same time, and I was doing a pretty bad job of both of them. Um, anyways, so uh, as you can see, it's, it's both latent. You can't see the latency so much. Um, uh, because it's happening on both the iPad and the TV, uh, but you can obviously see the choppiness, and it was just making it really hard because I would uh, constantly be overcorrecting, and then in one direction, then overcorrecting in another direction, um, and so as a result, I'm flying significantly slower and with nowhere near as much accuracy as uh, as I'd like. So um, I end up switching back over to just flying with. Uh, the my iPhone and the Moverios, which unfortunately you can't see through the Moverios, but you can at the very least see what it looks like. Um, yeah, I don't know. You can see my, my my flight quality improve because I can actually see what's going on, and it's not choppy and latent. Okay, switching from trying to drive this whole thing on my iPad and TV to doing it on the Moverios, all from a battery pack. Uh, going uh, from my iPhone to the Apple TV to the Moverios. So you won't be able to see what I see, but um, <laughs> I can at least narrate. So I go and I hit uh, screen mirroring, Apple TV, and then like magic it pops up in my Moverios. can try and fly like this just so you can kind of see um, let's put this in do not disturb all right Okay, flying with the Moverios is definitely much, much better than with the TV. Yeah, it's significantly less choppy. Resolution isn't perfect, but it's not horrible either. Let's see. And so I'm only looking through the Moverios, I'm not flying with the, the screen at all. And you can already kind of see that while my flying isn't perfect, it's significantly, like, it's much better than before. Before it was absolutely a god-awful, uh, because I would hit the stick and then I'd have a really poor quality image, and um, and then it would take, I don't know, it felt like a second or two before, uh, before I'd see a response.
Yeah. So the the latency with with uh, through the iPhone and through the Moverios is actually not terrible. I'm intentionally flying in sort of close quarters places because it would be very easy to mess it up. And fortunately I'm not messing it up. So I guess in conclusion, I feel super impressed by the system. You know, I've been on this sort of quest to solve the Moverio BT35E connecting to various Mavic flavors problem for, for years. You know, I've tried so many different things from AirPlay dongles to Chromecast dongles, uh, Android to computers with HDMI out, uh, hacking a Raspberry Pi to behaviors on Android device. Um, you know, and years ago, or like, I guess maybe two years ago, um, when the smart controller came out, that completely solved that problem for uh, for me, for the Mavic Pro 2. Just plug and play with the USB-C is absolutely incredible. <laughs> but then I found, then I got the, uh, the, the Mavic Air and just ran into all these problems again. Uh, I had actually even tried this, uh, Apple TV hack a number of years ago, which is what, part of why I had uh, the, my, my Apple TV already modded in the first place. But the key was that at that point in time, I was connecting through a wireless network um, over Wi-Fi for, uh, for the AirPlay. And it was, that's what actually created a lot of the latency and a lot of the, um, uh, there were I had a bunch of dropouts and disconnections and stuff like that, which was, uh, which was really challenging. So overall, I'm super happy with the system. Uh, at the moment, it's it's bulky for my taste. The whole point of me getting a Mavic Air in the first place was um, to go backpacking with it, where you know you want things to be as light as humanly possible. Uh, so next steps for me uh, are I'm going to try and gut it and uh, see how much weight I can remove off of the system and. I'll share that once uh, once I have it. But yeah, I'm super happy with the system and uh, sad about uh, its poor performance in connecting with the 4K display because I would have loved this as a system to broadcast um, HDMI wirelessly to uh, to a TV. But that's not the end of the world, and uh, really happy with this. So that's great.